Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be going over three SCP stories that have taken my fancy and I'm hoping that you'll enjoy as well. Let's get right into it, shall we? Item number 6089. Level 1 Restricted. Containment Class Safe. Disruption Class Dark. Risk Class Notice. Special Containment Procedure SCP 6089 is self contained within Site 132. Notice by request of the Site Director. Personnel are not to prey near SCP-6089. Pending review. Site-132 researcher and chaplain Dr. Josiah Lopez suggested building unique chapels for various faiths reflected by Site-132 staff. Description. SCP-6089 designates the former Site-132 chapel as of June 21st, 2019. The chapel is surrounded by an impenetrable barrier which prevents entry or exit. Every Sunday at 9.33 a.m., two humanoid entities materialize within the chapel. The first entity, resembling former staff Mark, redacted, is seated at the front row facing the altar. The second entity is directly in front of it. The first entity then approaches the second and assaults them. Both entities fight each other. After several minutes, the second entity falls to the ground, with the first standing over their body. Both entities then look to the ceiling. Shortly after, the chapel becomes engulfed with flames and will burn for an indeterminate amount of time. Note that noises and smells associated with fire burning are absent. Sounds including banging, groaning, beeping, ringing emanate from the chapel. The sounds are unique with each event. The frequency of sounds increases if personnel pray near SCP-6089. These sounds cease when the chapel stops burning. At 9.30 a.m. the following Sunday, SCP-6089 is restored to its original state. Addendum prior to June 21st, 2019 and SCP designation, an individual desecrated an idol placed within the chapel. The former staff, Mark Redacted, was terminated after security footage identified him as the perpetrator. Due to related altercations, religious services at Site-132's East Wing are forbidden. SCP-6004 Object Class Uncontainable Slash Tiamat Special Containment Procedures Despite the best efforts of the Foundation, SCP-6004 remains uncontainable until such time that drastically more powerful containment measures are made available, or SCP-6004 returns to an inactive state of its own accord. As such, current containment procedures revolve around the preparation for such a time and minimizing collateral damage caused by its current state. SCP-6004 is constantly monitored via remaining functional satellite imagery with satellite arrays to be appropriated from world governments if necessary. Constant reports of its location, direction, speed, and activities are to be provided at all times to better aid global task forces in evacuation of populations from likely attack sites and impact zones. Due to the volume of casualties, civilians with better chances are prioritized at the discretion of task force members on the ground. Aid shelters and temporary housing are to be provided in rural, remote, and off-the-grid areas, including small towns, foundation containment sites, and settlements previously attacked by SCP-6004. To avoid drawing the attention of SCP-6004, all foundation sites are to minimize pollution and carbon emissions as best as possible, with the aim of switching to solar, geothermal, or nuclear power as soon as feasible. Research into the most effective anomalous containment measures and weaponry is to be carried out on Foundation 
and Global Occult Coalition sites globally, with both organizations to collaborate on these projects. Amnestic production has been increased by 230% in order to return the world's unawareness of the veil following SCP-6004's successful containment. Description SCP-6004 is a massive serpentine entity of variable size measuring between 0.2 and 1,900 kilometers in length with mass proportional to its length. While its physiology varies from resembling Australian ophidians, its coloration has consistently been primarily black with dull prismatic stripes running vertically down its length with a pale underbelly. SCP-6004 possesses a pair of horns and a large array of teeth, more than would be expected or biologically possible in a non-anomalous ophidian. Horns feature thousands of engraved depictions of wildlife. SCP-6004 is observed to move at abnormally fast speeds, often in excess of 1,200 km an hour on land and 2,800 km an hour underwater. The movement often creates large rifts in the terrain and tsunamis in the water, along with sonic concussions in both and out of water. SCP-6004 exhibits strength and durability far beyond what its proportions would suggest, having bite force strong enough to crush key units, destroy mountains, and throw itself into the upper troposphere. It is able to fly at this altitude in a fashion similar to swimming. By maintaining consciousness, SCP-6004 is able to alter weather patterns and atmospheric conditions on a global scale at will, primarily by exerting a mild cooling effect on the Earth's average temperature by 2 degrees Celsius. This effect varies in intensity and effect locally, with the most significant changes being intensified snowfall in glacial areas and poles, increased rainfall in arid areas, and severe thunderstorms globally. The most direct threatening use of SCP-6004's ability to control weather conditions is when directly within its line of sight, often in response to outside stimulus or its theoretical emotional state. This most commonly takes the form of severe thunderstorms, hurricane generation, torrential rain, and the generation of extremely large waves. It uses this ability primarily as a form of offense in an area, typically striking cities, mines, and power plants with severe weather events before striking physically. Rain generated in this form has observed to spontaneously generate plant life within its area of effect. This flora has been observed to grow extremely rapidly and is at times hostile to human life. SCP-6004 possesses several powerful anomalous qualities regarding itself. Thaumaturgical scans have shown that SCP-6004 possesses a form of selective tangibility, which has been observed at times of attack. It often uses this ability when swallowing organic materials, primarily animals, while avoiding swallowing earth or buildings. SCP-6004 is known to consume living human persons when besieging populated areas and is often observed regurgitating various local fauna to the immediate area. Discovery of SCP-6004 Beginning in December 1988, unusual seismic activity began to be detected through mainland Australia and in particular around the eastern coast of New South Wales. Initially, initially, this was not believed to be anomalous and was ignored. However, over the following years, this seismic activity grew in intensity and frequency until finally in 2019 it was decided that investigators would be dispatched from Site 40 to investigate. Investigations show that the source of this seismic activity 
was located within Walimi National Park, an area comprised of 500,173 hectares of wilderness located between the Blue Mountains. Investigations were halted before more precise measurements could be taken by the 2019-2020 bushfire season when intense wildfires affected the area in question, and it was decided that investigation would resume upon the fires being put under control. While waiting for conditions to improve, drastically more intense seismic activity was detected from within the area. Culminating on the 10th of February, 2020, when firefighter Mark Delaney was reported to have disobeyed orders while attempting the rescue of a panicked civilian who had fled into dangerous terrain within Wolomi National Park. The subsequent events led to SCP-6004 emerging from a subterranean cavern and departing the area. Foundation investigation into this event uncovered the remains of Mr. Delaney, pinned beneath a large granite boulder located in close proximity to the ruined entrance to a large subterranean cabin, surrounded by evidence of rock slides and an emergence event. The examination of Mr. Delaney's remains revealed a portable video camera was worn on his helmet and captured the events following his attempted rescue of the as-yet-unknown civilian leading up to the emergence of SCP-6004. A transcript of the recovered footage follows. Footage begins showing Mark Delaney among other firefighters standing among several parked fire trucks. Firefighters can be seen attempting to suppress intense fire fonts with high-pressure hoses, and visibility is very poor due to smoke and reflected light from intense flames. Mr. Delaney is requesting support from another firefighter in retrieving a ladder from a fire truck when an unidentified woman is seen running towards the flames. Stop right there! The woman appears unable to hear Mr. Delaney and is highly panicked. She continues into the woodland at speed, with Mr. Delaney giving chase. Another firefighter can be heard faintly calling for him to stop. Oh, no, it's too hot. Camera view is largely obscured by smoke and embers as Mr. Delaney enters the woodland. The path appears wide, but is surrounded by intense flames. All that can be heard is the roar of the flames. Mr. Delaney continues after the woman, occasionally swearing. The camera jolts violently for eight seconds, causing Mr. Delaney to fall. He returns to his feet and resumes running. Fuck me. It's getting worse. Shit, lady. Come back. Mr. Delaney occasionally loses sight of the woman, running for an additional 83 seconds before entering a clearing on the edge of the ravine. Past the ravine, a mass of flaming wilderness can be seen. The unidentified woman can be seen cowering at the edge of the ravine. Come here. Mr. Delaney approaches the woman, grabbing and examining her. She appears hysterical and unresponsive to Mr. Delaney's questioning. Fucking hell. Okay, okay. Mr. Delaney lifts the woman out of the frame, presumably into a fireman's carry. The camera swings over the edge of the ravine, showing a large reptilian mask partially exposed by the fissure in the ground. Fuck me. The reptilian mass shifts with the movement, seemingly causing another earth tremor. Mr. Delaney stumbles, hanging onto the ground. A jutting ledge on the opposite side of the ravine splits from the surrounding earth, with several flaming trees falling onto the scaled mass. The mass flinches away from the burning vegetation, and much more severe tremors begin. An extremely loud roaring sound can be heard, cutting out the audio for the remainder of the footage the scaled mass retreats beneath the earth. The camera looks towards the sky, showing several lightning flashes through the smoke and rain beginning to fall. Camera shake presumed to be result of earth tremors worsens as the ravine returns to view. A much larger mass emerges from the earth, resulting in upheaval of a significant quantity of stone and earth. Frame-by-frame -frame analysis shows that the mass is the head of SCP-6004 on fire and visibly roaring. Mr. Delaney and the unidentified woman are thrown back with the camera pointed to the sky. SCP-6004 can be seen rising into the air before disappearing in the smoke. 
torrential rain begins to fall into frame. Flames recede. End of log. Following the emergence of SCP-6004, severe thunderstorms rapidly formed over the bushfire-affected areas in Australia, effectively dousing them by mid-March. While the Foundation began to track SCP-6004, investigation revealed that areas affected by these thunderstorms began to exhibit anomalous rapid plant growth. Additionally, both Foundation and mundane weather monitoring organizations detected a reversing of global warming trends. SCP-5020 Containment Class Euclid Level 2 Restricted Special Containment Procedures Unactivated SCP-5020 are to be kept in Site 64's secure storage locker lined with high-grade insect repellent. Foundation web crawler CRT-IO is to scan online retailers for potential SCP-5020 instances, which it is to purchase using allotted funds. SCP-5020 activated within Foundation containment are to be kept in unfurnished humanoid containment chambers sized appropriately to their masses. Chambers are to be lined with high-grade insect repellent and are to be checked weekly for potential damage. In the case of containment breach, security personnel are to utilize Foundation-issued flamethrowers to neutralize the instance. SCP-5020 activated outside of the containment are to be apprehended by MTF ETA-6, who are to contain or neutralize instances as necessary. Witnesses of SCP-5020 transformations are to be administered Class B amnestics under standard cover story of the event being marketing for an independent film. Description SCP-5020 is the collective designation for all Atari 2600 model CX-2006 Heavy Sixer consoles distributed by Atari, including SCP-5020, were distributed between 1977 and 1978 by Atari Incorporated before they were discontinued and replaced by the CX-2600 Light Sixer model. SCP-5020 possesses slight deviations from the design of anomalous consoles, namely the presence of Arcadia branding. SCP-5020's anomalous effects only manifest if three conditions are met. The device is over 10 years of age since its initial manufacturing. The device still possesses above 45% of its original components, including the cartridge slot. The device possesses some exposure damage, likely resulting from inadequate storage and neglect. Once these conditions are met, SCP-5020 becomes a host to SCP-5020-A. SCP-5020-Alpha is an extra-dimensional colony of insects that resides within the collective interiors of SCP-5020. SCP-5020-A consists of various different species, with the most prevalent being German cockroaches. Despite this, SCP-5020-A collectively functions as a hive mind Members of SCP-5020-A are not particularly violent, although biological analysis has regularly found them to carry contagious diseases such as malaria, cholera, and gastroenteritis. SCP-5020-A do not require outside nutrition, almost never exiting the confines of SCP-5020. Estimations as to the exact size of the colony have far exceeded the collective interiors of known SCP-5020 instances, suggesting the existence of additional consoles outside of containment. Attempts to view the internal cavity of SCP-5020 instances through invasive means have universally failed.
resulting in the expulsion of insects from the exposed interior. When operating a standard Atari 2600 cartridge, members of SCP-5020-A will begin to extrude from SCP-5020 instance en masse through ventilation ports, exposed ports and cracks in the exterior casing. The swarm will then coalesce around SCP-5020, using their own mass will take the form of a physical entity around the device. The appearance of this entity varies between instances but is believed to directly correlate with the cartridge being operated. While in this state SCP-5020 are hostile and will show immediate aggression if approached. The only known way of dispersing the colony is the neutralization of the enveloped SCP-5020 instance. And there we are. I hope you've enjoyed our three stories for today. If you enjoyed them, throw me a like, subscribe, or comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.